copper and call me Penny. Look at here, boys. Looks like we got us a color trying to sing like the white man. Let's get him. It's incredible. Well, I don't know about none of y'all, but I, for ones, I'm glad they got him. Mm-hmm, show sure Liz. He been sitting up there singing and prancing around thinking he wanted him. And see, well, now he know he not. They showed him what they really think of him. Mm-hmm, ain't that right, Clarence? So, Mad Attack Gaming, where are you? This video is for you. You are the one that requested a video on Nat King Cole. I bet you thought I forgot about it, didn't you? Yeah, that's what you thought. You thought I forgot about it because it's been six months ago. I am so sorry. I apologize. But you were the very first person to request a video. And this one is for you. Go ahead and like and subscribe to this video. And let's get to it. Nat King Cole was born Nathaniel Adams Cole on March 17th, 1919 in Montgomery, Alabama. He had three brothers. There was Eddie, Ike, and Freddie, and one half-sister named Joyce. When he was about four years old, his family moved to Chi-Town, baby, and his daddy became a Baptist minister. It was also at the age of four that Nat learned how to play the organ. He was taught by his mom, Perlina Coles. At the age of 15, Nat dropped out of school to pursue a music career. And in 1937, he married Nadine Robinson, who was a cast member in a play that he was touring with at the time. Now, as I stated before, around this time, Nat King Cole was playing the organ, touring everywhere, and it's at one show that he started singing. And the way that happened, or so the story goes, the way that happened is that he was playing the organ and an audience member got drunk and they wanted to hear some singing. And Nat was like, no, I don't want to do any singing. I don't do any singing. And the audience member was like, listen, you better do some doggone singing. I didn't pay my money. Somebody better be singing. And so Nat wanted to appease the crowd and appease the guy, and he started singing. And the song he sang was Sweet Lorraine. And he sounded so good that the audience went wild. He later went to a studio and recorded this same song, and it became a huge hit. And that's when the money started rolling in. And you know what happened when that money starts to roll in, honey? People start acting funny. New people start coming into play, and that's exactly what happened with Nat King Cole. He divorced his first wife in March of 1948, and six days later, he married his second wife, Maria Hawkins, whom was a dancer and a singer in her own right. Together, Nat and Maria had five children. They had Natalie, Carol, Nat Kelly, and twins, Casey and Timelin. Now, Carol was actually not a daughter that was birthed to them. She was actually Maria's sister's daughter, but her sister died at a very early age and Nat and Maria adopted Carol. Now his son, Nat Kelly Cole, was also adopted, but sadly, he died of AIDS in 1995 at the age of 36. Now let's talk about some of the racism that Nat King Cole experienced. And boy, did he experience a lot. Now the first big case of racism against Nat King Cole and his family was when he purchased a house in 1948 in the all white neighborhood of Hancock Park in California. The white neighbors threw a fit, y'all. They had a breakdown. The KKK burnt the cross in his front yard. Members of the Homeowners Association and the Property Owners Association sent letters to him telling him that they didn't want any undesirables in the neighborhood. But on this one, Nat clapped back. He sent his own letter and he told them, hey, look, I don't want no undesirables here either. And if I see any, I'll be the first person to let you know. <laughs> That was a good one. <laughs> the association even started a legal battle to try to get this man kicked out of his house. And fortunately, the courts threw it out. But the harassment and abuse does not end there. They poisoned his family dog. Kill the dog, y'all. What the dog do? What the dog do? There were plenty of times that he came down to Miami and other southern states and performed but he was not allowed to stay in the hotels that he performed at. You know, and that was an issue all across the board for many black entertainers, but a lot of other black entertainers were like, okay, you know what? Since you're not gonna let me stay here, I'm not gonna perform here. 
but not Nat King Cole. He was about his business and he didn't want to make a bad name for himself. So he actually performed at these hotels that wouldn't accept him and let him stay there. One of the biggest racial incidents happened to Nat King Cole in 1956. This is the incident that I was referring to in the opening sequence of this video. Nat had come down to Birmingham, Alabama to perform a scheduled concert. Unbeknownst to him, days and weeks before the concert, there had been pamphlets and informational packets showing his picture with a lot of white female fans. And the title of these pamphlets would be things like Nat King Cole and his white women or Nat King Cole and your daughter. Your daughter. No, she's not on the picture really, but imagine your daughter with this black man. Let's get him. Now, Cole, of course, had heard that, you know, uh, somebody was probably going to come to the stage and jump him or things like that. But he had heard this plenty of times before. Like, of course, this man had performed everywhere, all over the world. So he had heard these type of things. But he didn't think that it would truly come to fruition. Baby, that man was on that stage in Birmingham, Alabama. Those Alabama folks was not playing. Do you hear me? Those men, the KKK, but officially known as the North Alabama Citizens Council, baby, those men rushed that dog on stage and tried to beat the mess out of Nat King Cole. And they did. They actually did. They were beating up on him bad, y'all. In the midst of hitting him, he actually fell off his piano stool and injured his back. The beating did not last long because law enforcement ran in and dispersed everybody, but they still beat him up enough where he had bruises and welts and his back was busted. Now, even though all of the men that were involved were tried and convicted, Cole was left with a really, really, really bad taste in his mouth. He was quoted as saying, I can't understand it. I haven't taken part in any protest. I haven't done anything to fight segregation, nor have I spoke against it. Why did they attack me? And y'all know who was waiting with an answer. Good old black folks that had been mad at him the whole time feeling like he was acting white and not speaking out. They were letting him know, look, it doesn't matter. It don't matter if you don't speak out. It don't matter what you do. They still look at you as just another. I'm not going to say the word, but y'all know the word. But that's what the black people were saying to him. Poor Nat King Cole, he was facing things from both sides. He was facing just basically the regular racism from white people. And then black people didn't have his back. They were glad. Some of them were kind of glad it happened to him. And they were basically saying like, see, there's no distinction. Like just because you shut up and don't say anything or just because you slick your hair back and you sing those, the, well, he, he don't sing like that, but y'all know what I mean. But just because you sing those songs like that don't matter. They still look at you as just another black man. But you can't, I, you can't blame him though. He was trying to keep audiences happy on both sides. You know what I mean? Like he just felt like if he would shut up and not say anything, he wouldn't make the black people mad or the white people mad. You know, everybody would love Nat King Cole. He was trying to stay neutral. Poor Nat. Are you feeling bad for him yet? Huh? Are you feeling bad for him? Well, let's burst that bubble and tell you about an affair that he was having on his second wife. Yeah, he was cheating on Maria with Gunilla Hutton. Gunilla. Gunilla. I don't know. Maybe you guys can pronounce it. But I believe it's Gunilla Hutton. Gunilla. Gunna. Gunilla. Yes, honey. Can you believe it? His wife sticking through him through everything, rubbing the back of his head while he didn't got beat up in the back of the head because he performing on stage and, you know, folks doing him wrong, people not paying him like they need to and stuff like that. His wife trying to be there for him and you setting up their cheat? You setting up their cheat? Now, before we go deep into Gunilla or Gunilla, I can't, y'all can't say that, y'all. Before we go deep into that, she was not his only mistress. Let's get that clear. She was not his only mistress, but she was a bold mistress, y'all. So anyways, he had been dating her. I believe they got together in early 1964. He sent her money. They got check stubs or he sent her $5,000 and stuff like that. You know, Gunilla chilling. She having a good time, you know, flossing, showing off. Really thinking that's something. Baby, let me tell you how bold she was. Picked up the doggone phone and called his wife. Called his wife, told her, hey, listen, you need to divorce Nat. 
Now, I know every female, girlfriend, wife, uh, some husbands too, got this same look on their face. You called the wife and said, what? She needs to divorce Nat so she can have him for herself. I, I know, I've never heard anything like it. The wife cussed her out, rightfully so, told her off, and then waited till Nat got home and confronted him and was like, what is this? Who is this girl calling me, telling me I need to leave you? What do you, hey, I don't know what you got going on, but you need to fix it. He was mortified that this lady had actually called his wife. And so he apologized profusely and he called Hutton and he, he broke it off. And, but you know what, child, that's not enough. It ain't enough. And so she left. They did separate for a while. Like she, she didn't want to deal with that. Who does? This is when he got cancer. And when he got cancer, Maria just could not. It wasn't in her heart to just let him suffer through that alone. So that's when they reconciled. So the way that Nat King Cole found out that he had cancer is that he was performing in Las Vegas at the Sands Hotel. And his back started to hurt. He had already lost some weight, you know, and he had chalked up his back problems to him being beat up on that stage back in Alabama all those years ago but this pain was more than any other pain and so while he was on stage at the sands he actually collapsed he was rushed home from that concert and he chalked that up to being you know just pain exhaustion you know but he kept losing weight and finally his friends implored him to go seek medical help and he did and that's when he found out he had a malignant tumor and an advanced state of growth on his left lung. Cole, who had been a heavy smoker almost all of his life, had lung cancer. He continued working and doing shows and singing, but this was against his doctor's wishes, but he kept on pushing until he just couldn't anymore. And then on January the 25th, 1965, his entire left lung was surgically removed. To complicate things on February the 1st, that next month over, his dad died. So this mixed with everything just really put a damper on Nat King Cole, on his life. If you're sick as a dog already with lung cancer. You just gotten a lung removed and then your father passes away. This obviously was too much on that man. And he died on February the 15th, 1965 at the age of 45. In 2014, a lifelong family secret came out about Nat King Cole. It was about his adopted daughter, Carol, you know, the one that was his wife's sister's child. Well, come to find out, back in 1964, just before her father passed away, Carol had given birth to a daughter at the age of 20 years old. And her mother, well, her auntie, her stepmother, Maria, had forced Carol to give the baby up. Carol fought. She did not want to give her baby up, but at the time she was doing some acting and also Maria said that it would tarnish the family's name for her to be an unwed mother. But luckily in 2014, the daughter, Caroline, which is Nat King Cole's granddaughter, did some digging and found out that Nat King Cole was her grandfather. She was reunited with her mother and all was well there. Um, all right, this is the full scandalous video on Nat King Cole. Of course, there wasn't much scandal because he's not King Cole. He doesn't have that much. And the women that he did have, honey, were not crazy like Ganilla and called his wife. So we don't have any of that information. Subscribe and like the video and go ahead and leave more people in the comments because I'm going down the list now. And like I said, these videos are going to be people that you leave in the comments. So leave those and like and subscribe to this video. Bye.